Dear audience, good afternoon. To all of you here at the concert hall in Aarhus at the closing session of the Industrial Technologies in 2012 conference. Congratulations to the organizers for a great job well done and everybody who contributed to make this conference a success. I'm pleased and honored for the invitation to give the final presentation of this important event. In my presentation, I will share with you my view, the importance of manufacturing and industrial technologies in Horizon 2020 for Europe. I hope after my short presentation, you will understand why a prospering uh, manufacturing base is crucial to the sustainability of Europe economy and indispensable to reach the goals of Europe 2020. In the wake of the financial and public debt crisis, industry, which is real economy, has regained importance and is rightly back on the political agenda in Europe. Can I have the next place, uh, slide, please? Or can I do it by myself? Is that here? Yeah. Oh, fine. In my presentation, I will firstly address the context of Horizon 2020, which, in my view, should always be kept in mind. Secondly, I will open your mind and confirm the preeminence of manufacturing and industrial technologies. Industry is vitally important for Europe. Real economy, the muscles of the economy, is the basis for growth jobs, and hence social welfare. And finally, I will show why we need innovation more than ever for a competitive and sustainable Europe. <coughs> Europe 2020 is the EU growth strategy for the coming decade. The EU wants to become a smart, sustainable, and inclusive economy. These three mutably, mutually reinforcing priorities should help the EU and the member states deliver high levels of employment, productivity, and social cohesion. Horizon 2020 is a key pillar of Innovation Union, a Europe 2020 flagship ship and in a initiative aimed at enhancing Europe's global competitiveness. Horizon 2020 has the three priorities, as we heard before, excellent science, industrial leadership, and societal challenges. So, ladies and gentlemen, Horizon 2020 will be essentially to, essential to strengthen the European economy through research and innovation, while at the same time addressing the major societal challenges that Europe is facing. The structure of Horizon 2020 introduces a much needed streamlining of the EU research and innovation funding programs. However, it is important to clarify how the three strategic objectives identified by Horizon 2020, excellent science, industrial leadership, and societal challenges will be coordinated. Ladies and gentlemen, moving to industrial leadership, let me stress that European business is highly committed to research and innovation and to bring new solutions to the market. High participation of industry is therefore crucial and needs to be closely monitored. So, innovation needs a broad spectrum of industrial technology. Almost any product could carry the label manufacturing inside. For example, the Mercedes-Benz 
research car, the F125. F means Forschung, research in German. And 125 is the anniversary of the automotive car. So it looks like the future. This car runs on hydrogen, presented on the Frankfurt Auto Show. It is a trailblazing concept for large, luxurious automobiles. It's a fuel cell plug-in hybrid with a range of 1,000 kilometers. It's revolutionary hydrogen storage te technology that has lithium sulfur high voltage battery with high energy density. It's pioneering battery charging by induction. It's an e formatic all wheel drive with four wheel electric motors and individual torque control at each wheel. The body shell of lightweight hybrid construction will gull wing, with gull wing doors for, optional for optimal access, more safety and reduced waste, weight. Innovative saloon car architecture of avant-garde, avant-garde design and driver fitness safety and ease of operation at the highest level thanks to natural touch, gesture and voice control. Always online, always connected with at your command cloud-based infotainment. With respect to Horizon 2020 structure, manufacturing is clearly an enabling, an enabling cross-pillar activity with major relevance to several research and innovation themes in all these three pillars. Modern manufacturing generates high edu value and thus wealth. Industrial production, first and foremost, means high value added products, products and value added, with the help of skilled people and their knowledge and factory equipment, machine and tools, or in other words, within assets within a factory. High tech, high value products made by high tech production processes equal premium cars, high-tech machine tools, aircraft engines, high-speed trains, airplanes, accessories, just to name a few. And the factory as lean, and also the products, as lean and clean as possible. Ideally, in a zero emission and zero waste factory, the factory of the future. Industry will therefore inevitably be the engine of the future low carbon, resource efficient and knowledge based economy. Already today, about 20% of the workforce in industry are engineers and this is really a truly remarkable number and will increase in future. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, manufacturing is the wealth creating activity and uh, two trackle or Europe's grand so societal challenges. Thus, it is very critical that Europe enhances its manufacturing base in this time of crisis since new manufacturing jobs will be adding value to the society and the economic development of the continent. The factories of the future, public-private partnership managed to re-engage industry both big and small in European projects. With respect to Horizon 2020 structure, manufacturing is clearly an enabling cross-pillar activity with major relevance to several research and innovation themes in all three pillars and especially Europe's grand societal challenges. As the challenges ahead of us are increasing, the demand for suitable solutions is increasing too. 
since R&D is no means at itself, but is an indispensable business necessity. Our commitment from industry should not stop at the level of co-funding of research and innovation activities, but should also cover the uptake of research results by industry. Our community is prepared to go into this direction by complementing the roadmap with necessary elements from vision to R&D strategic investments to industrial priorities to expected impact on European industry competitiveness. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Heinrich, for this very interesting talk here and addressing some of the issues which we've been talking about at this conference here. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me just take the podium here for a few minutes and say some concluding works here. I think it's not a secret that EU is facing huge challenges. Debt is high in Europe, growth is low, innovation is insufficient, jobs are being lost from Europe. And we, that's really some of the prevailing challenges for Europe today. Can we deal with that? The answer, of course, is yes. But there are many challenges ahead of us. And it's not going to be easy. It will require a concerted effort from many different partners in the European society here. It's also so that we are today certainly living in a world where new is normal, a very competitive world, and that means that there's a new world order, you could say. We must improve Europe's competitiveness. We must be smarter than the rest of the world. And we must invest today in growth for tomorrow. If I should say just a few words here, and I would think back on a speech which I'm sure many of you have heard, either while you were alive or present and so forth, is actually going back to January. 1960 to the words of Kennedy. What did Kennedy say to the US city, to the US public there? I would try to reformulate to the European public here. And I'll say that to European citizens. Do not ask what Europe can do for you, but what can you do for Europe? That applies to the universities, it applies to the students, it applies to the researchers, it applies to the employee at European industry, it applies to all the political system and to all our friends in the Brussels here. We need to work together here and then we need to have address all the questions here. It's not me, I, me and myself, but it's us and we, and we have to address what can we do for Europe here. That's the only way I see out of the European crisis here we have today. I think it's also fair to say we are not very many politicians here today that sometimes, at least within the last year, I have felt that we have been lacking political leadership. And although we can say many, many good things about Europe here, again, making the right decision, what is the right thing for Europe in the years to come, is sometimes a very difficult and very challenging process. And the reason for that is that many of the politicians are facing with the fact that they have to go back to their different countries and be re-elected. And many of the politicians today have to make decisions which are not popular. There's no way out of this here. And therefore, they may shake their hands and say, well, let's better not do it. And this is the worst thing they can do today. They have to stand firm and do what is best for the different countries and what is best for Europe. Because are we not having doing that today again? I really is sort of very uncertain about European's future, at least for some of the countries here. I do hope that all this, on this bumpy road, we are seeing a tendency that the European political leaders are standing firm, are doing the right thing, but certainly they are up against huge auto markets here. So again here with this interesting conferences, we're talking about public-private partnership, and this is to me the only way out of this year. I have recently, I mean, I myself is a university professor here, and I think one of the most important thing a university professor can do is to have educate the next generation of talent and young people here. That is really what Europe is needing, and that is what the universities should do foremost here. But I think also at the universities, we should, when I'm sitting at the board of Carlsberg, we have to deal with corporate social responsibility, CSR. 
and I tried to introduce a new concept to the university system, means SSR, scientific social responsibility. I really do believe that universities have to show and the professors there have to show scientific social responsibility, meaning that of course they should still educate the next talent, talented people. They should do the excellent science here, public and science and nature. But also, as Heinrich just mentioned out here, it's also their obligation to bring this science into industry because the university professors are not the best what they want to bring that out to market and industry here. That's what we need European industry for both the big industries, but also again foster the smaller industries here. And again, I really do believe that there's some bumps on the road which we can help solving here. I have for a long time been advocating for have a European patent here. It's ridiculous today that we have to run around filing patents in Europe in a number of different country states. We should be sure that if we file one patent that applies to all over Europe. I'm sure that would help this process of starting out companies which may, may eventually grow into larger uh, companies later on here. I think also that if I look at the horizon 2020 here, I think it's a great uh, plan here, as was mentioned before. Again, some of the bump on the row here will be to secure the budget for that. It's certainly not going to be trivial, again, when we're facing the financial problems we are in Europe today. But again, I would say it would be a catastrophe if they do not find the money for doing this here, because that's again really investing today in the growth for Europe for tomorrow here. If I look at the Horizon 2020 program here, it's first of all, European research program will be gathered into one large powerful program, hopefully based on two simple words here, simplicity and flexibility. We should constantly fight sort of what sometimes is called the European bureaucracy. We should really try to do this in a flexible and simple way to get the funding, uh, funding out to the scientists and to the people from the industry here. Secondly, in Horizon 2020, that's really designed to bridge the gap between research and market here. This gap is not a death valley. We have to bridge this gap here. It's extremely important. Europe is known for outstanding research, for outstanding young people here, but we are much too slow in bringing this outstanding research into innovation and into products here. And that's something we certainly can learn both from our colleagues in US and from our colleagues in Asia. And certainly, the program is based on a challenge-driven approach, which identifies some of the grand challenges. I said before that European is faced with huge challenges like debts, uh, growth slow, innovation insufficient, and so. But we also today face with a number of other challenges, which is sometimes called grand challenges: the energy issue, the climate issues, affordable health care. Tap water, drinkable water, is not going to be trivial in many places in the world in just 20 or. 10 or 20 years from now on, and can you imagine a society without having access to tap water here? These grand challenges can only be solved if we all work together. They can only be solved if we invest in science and technology and engineering here. It's not the bankers who will solve these grand challenges. It's us as scientists here, not only us at universities, but us together with industry. And if we do not solve these problems here, then you can forget about all economic crisis in Greece and Spain and so forth here, because then the climate issues, the accessibility of water and so forth will be just be much larger problems and that will really change our society in a radical way here. I think this, pro this uh, conference here has been fantastic. I think this document we have in front of us today here is a very strong document here and I hope it really sends a very strong signal from all the industrial uh, as partners here to both our friends at the European Commission, but also certainly to the Danish presidency and to the political system here. Yes, European industry is committed to actually bridge this gap here. There was a couple of weeks ago here another conference here at Aarhus actually on excellence, more from the university point of view with the other program in EU, the ERC program, which is again a fantastic program here. So I think we have seen from the university system and for the, the industrial system a strong, yes, we realize that we have problem. Yes, we will work together to solve these problems here. Does that mean that there will not be problems ahead of us and challenges ahead of us? No but we have, in a concerted effort, helped solving some of these things here. I will end up by just saying that uh, I believe this has been a fantastic conference here. 
Uh, we have been lucky with the weather here, which of course have helped a lot here, but there is, as you can imagine, for arranging such a conference here, a huge number of people who really spend a lot of dedicated time to bring this into a success here. And let me just mention a few of these names here behind the scene here. It's some of my colleagues from the Einano Center here at Aarhus University, Nils Christian, Peter Tost, Rebecca Tostrup and David Kiel, just to mention a few of these here. From Aalborg University, we have Anders Vestergaard and Torben Peterson here. As you know, Spinworths have done a fantastic effort here. We have here at Denmark have a fantastic collaboration with the Spinworths team here. Pekka, Tom, Susi and Christina, thanks a lot for your really fantastic work here, bringing this to a success. And finally, but not least, I will also like to address my thanks to European Commission here, von Bose and his team. And in that respect, I would like to mention a Dane again, Hans Hartmann Peterson here, with whom we collaborate a lot again to make this to a success. Let me end by saying that this is not the end of this session here. There will actually be sessions all afternoon long, so I really hope that many of you will stay on and join these sessions here. It's the end of this morning session here. There will be lunch served out there. Thank you for your attention. I really hope that we will see this as the beginning of a great future for Europe. Thank you. <laughs>